Yeah, I went to um, engineering school at, uh, at upstate New York at RPI. So while I was there, I was working in mechanical engineering, playing in metal bands, singing, playing guitar. I was in a great band, and I just decided I was going to go and work for this startup company in Boston and start up a band in Boston. And so that kind of put me in, in Boston working for a really high-tech company wearing, like, you know, work dress clothes and a clean room bunny suit, uh, trying to play in a metal band at night that wasn't doing very well. And it was just this kind of, like, you know, you end up sitting on your uh, doorstep with whiskey at, like, 3 in the morning, like, what the hell am I doing? So like in my basement at night with really shitty tools, I basically built a kind of a kind of a half-functioning headbanger robot that kind of like twitched more than it's just the neck that rotated. And so at that point, I kind of made this connection. I was like, oh, I could somehow combine the engineering with the art and the music uh, in some kind of way. Um, I decided that I wanted to make something to control sound that had a real physical electromechanical nature. Um, something in the same respect that a lot of robotics would have, you know. So I built the throttles and I was like, I'm going to make a really simple bass controller that pushes back at you, like in the way the bass does. So the way you, you, know, you control the bass, but it also, you know, you can feel bass on your chest. I mean, you kind of feel it pushing against your face, but you also, uh, I wanted the controller to do the same thing. So the, there's motors in the throttles that as you're trying to push on, in the same way that like an autopilot on a plane would, yeah, you're trying to control it and it's pushing back. And so I built that and I just, you know, for like a year, I basically just played with that thing, like, you know, trying to make the nastiest bass sounds. I want these to be simple, I, I, I just, you know, people when they walk up to it, they know what it's for. It's like, oh, and it's, a, it's an instrument, it controls bass, you know, two bass signals that you can cross over their frequencies and it's like, whoa, 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 you know, and you, every once in a while you get that resonance that shakes the whole room. After I made the first one, I built each device to kind of surround me in this way. And this is actually something I haven't talked about, but I was a one-man band before, so I wanted to... That's ridiculous. You get up there with a the guitar, with your laptop, and that thing got really old to a lot of people really fast. You know, it was lame, and so then I started triggering things with a pedal. So I would trigger all my changes playing bass or guitar with a pedal, with the sequences broken up. And then I was like, well, it'd be cool if I could tap with my left hand and play the drums in my right hand. And so that's you know, actually how I decided to make a drum controller. That was a sliding device for my right hand. But then I, was, I couldn't actually tap it, and that sounded ridiculous. And then it just dawned on me that, okay, I have to make everything. In surrounding you, so things you could do you know, with one hand, you could do together, and they would all be next to each other. I didn't really just want to make noise with these things, I wanted to compose. And of course not compose to the point of like computer music and um, you know like theory, like in a, a theory kind of way where I'd be like transcribing. But I also didn't want to just make noise, like knob turning like you know wall of noise kind of stuff. And so yeah, I would have to basically learn, practice twice after I built the damn thing for a show and then I don't know if anything's going to break. and. And a lot of times things did, you know, like the chain would break, and it's not like you just you broke your string. It's like, oh, a chain broke in the sprocket. I have to go to, you know, I have to go to industrial warehouse and buy another one. So you're you're kind of screwed. So it was kind of stressful. <laughs>
I didn't want to make this thing efficient. I wanted to make it out of the proper materials and I wanted to make it strong. And it had to have weight because, you know, in, in Doom or in drone influence stuff, I really, you know, that's, I wanted to be able to, you know, you get that like trance like Doom thing, you know, where you're either stoned or, you know, whatever, you're just really into it. And it has weight to it, so I, um, each of these devices had to have that weight, and actually weight corresponds to like quality materials. So I think in sculptural terms, that works out together. So you know, like I, I avoided using aluminum as much as possible because it breaks down and it kind of it crumbles and uh, or it doesn't crumble, but it wears down. Um, but steel is much better. But steel also rusts. But you can use rust to your advantage. So if you use steel, you want it to be something that you're touching. So you're constantly kind of polishing it with your hand. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's hard to get all these things set up at one time, you know, like, because actually to get it, after a show, it's, it takes fucking forever getting set up. So, you know, at, when, you're, when you're waiting to get everything, you're, or something broke and I've got to go to the shop or I ordered a part, so you're, I'm like, okay, I'm going to be really efficient and write the song in my head beforehand. I'm walking around at school and I'm like, okay, I just wrote a song that I think will work on this device. And then when you actually sit down with the thing, it totally doesn't work. <laughs> and so... You, you somehow, it's, I guess it's somehow it would be a starting point, but I'm, I'm constantly being like uh, reconfigured by the devices. Like I think something's gonna work and then it's like, oh fuck, that didn't work at all. And so then I have to sit. I think there's no way to avoid just the painful, like down and dirty, like, I don't know, uh, repetitive use of the things. Like, play too many rock shows you're you're too much of a you know your set gets um, routine and then people start saying like oh you're just memorizing there's not there's the improvisation is lost so from the contemporary art side everyone they blow it away you know but if you play too many art scenes where there's you know people with wine and cheese and you're like making like art doom metal it's kind of like being a graffiti artist painting the walls of the gallery uh, so then 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 like your core like metal like doom roots are going to go against you, so. <sighs> so I, I'm getting really antsy to get back in the shop right now because, I don't know, there's something about just playing, show, playing shows is great and, and recording is great, but at some point you really want to get back with the materials and, and build stuff. I miss it.